रिस्पेक्टेड रिस्पेक्टेड महाराष्ट्र स्टेट चैप्टर आए थे ऑफिस डिग्नेटरी डॉक्टर साड़े सर डॉक्टर अनिता नेते डॉक्टर अविनाश भोसले डॉक्टर समीर सोनी एंड डॉक्टर हेमंत शिंदे respected moderators for today's today's uh, academic interactive session dr kalpana kekar madam and dr yogen bhatsar and today's faculty young and enthusiastic dr neelan and dr anish anish ji and all the members of maharashtra state chapter i say a very good evening to you all in this fourth series of uh, interactive session that we have arranged we will be discussing various case scenarios and how i do it and there will be again uh, there will be discussion with moderators for that particular case we all know that obesity has become a global epidemic and in india also the morbid obesity is increasing day by day and if we know the exact prevalence then almost 5% of indian population has been affected by morbid obesity India ranks third in global obesity index, and yes, the obesity patients coming for day-to-day -day anesthesia cases are also increasing. So here we are today discussing the common problem that is obese pregnant patient and an obese obese patient coming for an emergency laparotomy, and we will discuss all the points how I do it by the by the dynamic uh, faculty as well as by the experts and the model. So let us begin with today's session. I hand over the mic to Dr. Anita for further proceedings. Thank you, Dr. Manisha, madam. Now uh, I introduce our today's moderator, Dr. Kalpana Kekar, madam. Akhilesh, uh, please. Uh, Akhilesh, can you mute others? Akhilesh or Abhijit, there is a disturbance in uh, sound. Hello, Akhilesh. Yes, screen visible. Can you see the screen? Yeah, we can see the screen. Uh, we can see the uh, screen. Please. I mute. request. I request all other members to mute. Uh, ex except uh, Dr. Nehate, Madam. Thank you. Uh, so actually, Dr. Kalpana Kerkar, Madam. I welcome Dr. Kalpana Kerkar, Madam. for today's session and madam does not actually need any introduction to maharashtra uh, madam is a very senior anesthesiologist and she has been ex professor and head of department of anesthesia of bj medical college pune for many years and i am fortunate to have worked under madam for many years uh, madam at present is professor and head of department of critical care medicine at dy patil pune she has hundreds of students All over Maharashtra, so a very well-known figure. We are very fortunate to have Dr. Kalpana Kerkar for today's session. Uh, also, Madam is a poetess and has a keen interest in classical music. Also, a very dynamic personality. I welcome you, Madam, and I request Avinash to introduce Dr. Yogen Bhatt, sir. Avinash. Avinash Avinash sir must be on the mute Hello hello yes. thank you Anita yes. um it's my pleasure to introduce Dr Yogen Bhatt sir sir has done uh, uh, his uh, MBBS from GMC Mumbai in 1975 and DA in 1978 from GMC Mumbai he is practicing uh, since uh, last 42 years he had received national award of proficiency uh, proficiency in uh, of isa in 2015 then national award cols in 2021 he is president of isa borevli city branch uh, department of anesthesia anesthesia shatabdi and bhagwati hospital nama hospital vardhan hospital most important sir is leader of the 29 anesthesiologist members in his group and is doing group practice with them 
and uh, now uh, i also declared that uh, sir is uh, chair organizing chairperson for the our next uh, biennial cme at uh, borevli thank you sir over to anita hello hello yeah i request uh, samir to introduce our today's speaker dr meenal good evening everyone our first speaker for today's interactive session is dr meenal harde she is associate professor at enmc and byl nayar hospital in mumbai she has 21 presentations in her credit in, in national and international journal, journals and uh, she has written six uh, uh, chapters in various anesthesia related books so uh, she has also winner in the nagpur uh, state conference in the teachers category so i will uh, request dr meenal harde madam to begin her uh, topic uh, of presentation thank you thank you very much for the kind introduction i will share my screen is it seen yes dr minan yes, yes. thank you very much and uh, thank you very much tysa maharashtra state and greetings from mumbai i will uh, be uh, briefing about the anesthesia challenges in opes parturient as madam said uh, obesity has been declared as a global pandemic and uh, it is the prevalence is rising uh, more in women than in men percentage of morbidly obese women has doubled in the last decade and hence the number of obese parturients coming for anesthesia are also ever rising Uh, these patients are at increased risk of having perioperative complications and recent maternal and child health uh, uh, care inquiry uh, which is published in the pja has mentioned obesity as a major risk factor for maternal morbidity and mortality and neonatal morbidity also who systematic analysis of closed claim suits has pointed obesity as a major cause of perioperative complications and anesthesia related maternal mortality and hence we need to cover this topic in detail with relation to anesthesia management in elective and emergency lscs so this patient 33 year old primi with precious pregnancy 124 kg and bmi of 34 known case of uh, gestational diabetes mellitus uh, pregnancy induced hypotension and obstructive sleep apnea came to us for emergency lscs on admission she was diagnosed covid positive she was posted for emergency section in view of large baby and fetal distress on examination on quick uh, history and examination uh, she was uh, having short neck with heavy pad of fat around the neck and a mild scoliosis she was mpc 3 with large term vitals were acceptable with blood pressure of 160 by 90 on labetalol and uh, however oxygen saturation was 90% on room air with uh, air entry de decreased in bilateral basis basic investigations were available which were acceptable including coagulation profile and platelets were normal however blood sugar was very high keeping everything ready for the uh, difficult intubation and confirmed high risk consent and post operative icu care anti aspiration prophylaxis was given and patient was induced with combined spinal epidural anesthesia with a low dose intrathecal buprenorphine followed by graded epidural left uterine displacement was maintained with a wedge under the right buttock and uh, as soon as the patient was made supine saturation was even falling further in spite of oxygen supplementation and hence ramp position was given using pillows and uh, towels and cpap was attached intraoperatively which instantly improved the oxygen saturation to 99% and she had a stormy post operative course mainly due to the obesity covid and postpartum complications she required continued cpap and low molecular weight heparin had a long recovery and discharged after 15 days 20 kg lighter so 
obesity in pregnancy is becoming common and common but still the exact definition is not clear pre pregnant bmi more than 30% or more than 20% increase in weight during pregnancy may be defined as uh, obese parturient various indices to gauge obesity are ideal body weight which is height in centimeter minus 100 for males and 105 for females body mass or quetelet index which is weight upon height square and lean body mass which is used for calculating various drug doses uh, who has classified obesity into uh, parameters for mainly health st risk stratification and anything above 30 bmi is associated with moderate to severely increased risk factors Uh, uh, obesity uh, pathological changes and the physiological changes of pregnancy have compounded effect on each and every system of the body which increases the perioperative risk significantly cvs faces the major brunt with supine hypotension syndrome is exaggerated uh, extremely and so is the incidence of preeclampsia in addition chances of cardiac comorbidities like coronary artery disease arrhythmias are increased by almost 10 fold hence if time permits in elective cases detailed cardiovascular evaluation should be done in these patients these patients are potentially difficult airway and chances of uh, mask ventilation difficult intubation is common and compromised pulmonary functions are also uh, known due to decreased volumes and capacities small airway closure airway obstruction and osa which is very common in these patients and all these things make these patient highly susceptible for early day saturation and perioperative pulmonary complications there is 4 to 10 fold increased risk of preeclampsia gdm and obesity metabolic syndrome and pulmonary embolism which has been documented as a cause for sudden maternal deaths in obese parturients Uh, Wagen et al has found that 60% of obese parturients had micro aspirations and it is due to increased gastric volume decreased gastric ph and delayed gastric em emptying time and these patients are at high risk of mendelson syndrome and hence the anti aspiration prophylaxis can be stressed more over here pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics is altered due to the changes in volume of distribution lipid solubility there is higher sensitivity to depressant effects of sedatives mac is decreased as the net effect is unpredictable use of dosing scalar is recommended wherein they recommend administration of drugs based on ideal body weight most of the drugs uh however only benzodiazepine and neuromuscular can be you know blockers can be used on ideal body weight however rest of the drugs can be used on lean body weight neurexial local anesthetic uh, already in parturients the dose is reduced in obese patients due to the increase uh, the scapulet uh, increased scapulet spread is noted due to uh, excessive adipose tissue in the buttocks causes relative trend line of position of the spine and as such due to increased uh, the uh, increased abdominal fat and pancreas csf volume is decreased however the various studies have mentioned that the dose need not to be reduced but watch for higher scapulet spread and control the level Uh, in uh, obesity in pregnant female causes numerous consequences both in uh, fetus and mother including increased risk of cesarean section prolonged surgery hemorrhage and even mortality in fetus there is increased risk of congenital malformation still birth perinatal mortality and the anesthesiologist should be involved in the care of uh, obese parturients as early as possible right from the uh, antenatal assessment period which starts which is in the uh, later third trimester preferably uh, to formulate a plan with a team work and plan for labor analgesia and or elective cesarean section and also make arrangements for optimum post operative care early assessment here is essential Uh, for multidisciplinary uh, management of the patient and whenever the patient is admitted for delivery again detailed reevaluation with respect to history airway systemic examination and whether the uh, blood pressure and other parameters are controlled or no and any particular specific evaluation from uh, uh, cardiology or pulmonologist is needed whether cpap needs to be started right from the pre operative period that needs to be evaluated and started the aim here is to reduce the perioperative complications and improve the outcome 
so uh, preparedness is optimally essential and we have to ensure icu or hdu care in the post operative period adequate blood sugar blood pressure monitoring and optimization thrombo prophylaxis either mechanical can be started in the pre operative period and may go to pharmacological in the post operative chest physiotherapy needs to be involved early and incentive spirometry deep breathing needs to be started right in the pre operative period weight limit of the operating table with side support and table extenders should be checked adequate sizes of non invasive bp cuffs difficult airway cart different sizes of regional anesthesia kit with extra long needles and if need arises readiness for cvc cannulation and arterial cannulation should be confirmed these patients have compounded risk and limited physiological reserve and difficulty arises right from positioning vascular access airway regional and of course watch for supine hypotension syndrome now elective labor analgesia in these patients is highly recommended and has numerous benefits like it can be augmented for instrumental vaginal delivery and cesarean section so recommended is either lumbar epidural analgesia if you are starting in the early stages or combined epidural and spinal uh, if in the later stages for cesarean section unless contraindicated the anesthetic technique of choice is central duraxel anesthesia uh, and it is highly stressed in the obese parturients however irrespective of the technique used standard care for cesarean section and mainly in obese parturient is highly emphasized which includes aggressive anti aspiration prophylaxis mainly reducing the ph with sodium citrate is essential as micro aspirations is common preventing supine hypotension with left uterine displacement preferably by wedge under the buttock as stable tilt is difficult in these patients and patient should be firmly secured to the operating table before tilting even mild pressure area should be adequately padded oxygen supplementation is highly ensured while even transporting the patient oxygen should be on additional experienced health and preparedness for anticipated and unanticipated complications is crucial single shot spinal anesthesia is also a widely practiced and a successful technique it has fast onset reliable and dense neural pocket however certain concerns we need to keep in mind are technical difficulties and potential for exaggerated sprain also the surgery duration usually in these patients is prolonged and uh, uh, so these things can be kept in mind and still spinal anesthesia can be planned uh, the dose however need not to be reduced control the level by adding the pillow under the thorax and additives may be added however if the opioids are added like fentanyl or any other longer acting we need to monitor the patient additionally for uh, uh, delayed respiratory depression combined spinal epidural is the preferred and recommended technique and so we use this in our patient Uh, it uh, it has a fast onset and uh, immediate onset also and the sympathetic blockage is limited and controlled due to the graded titrated epidural block needle through needle technique is easier to perform in obese parturients and the time taken for cac as opposed to spinal is not uh, increased we can definitely perform cac even in emergency situations however uh, with epidural or cac unintentional dural puncture has been reported commonly in obese parturients and in that case the plan of action as recommended by multiple meta analysis and studies is to convert it into con uh, continuous spinal anesthesia uh, literature mentions the catheter reduces the csf leak and sealing of the dural puncture is better also obese patients have less csf volume and elevated intra abdominal pressure secondary to large panis this itself produces csf leak and thus they have less tendency to pdph uh, there are many challenges which are encountered during uh, spinal or uh, uh, cac and these can be reduced by proper positioning sitting position is recommended in all obese parturients as compared to lateral uh, adequate staffing should be there to support the patient and give optimum position sitting position facilitates identification of midline and distance from skin to epidural space is less in sitting and excess fat if at all it is coming in way can be taped like this in patients 
Ultrasound, if available, should be used for identification of midline, uh, level and optimal space. Also, estimation of depth of epidural space is easier. Uh, paramedian sagittal oblique plane is recommended in obese parturians. Extra long needles are available and can be used. However, literature has mentioned that 90% of the obese patients standard length needles are successful and they are easier to manipulate, provide better control. And hence, they have recommended that it is easier, it is better to start with the standard length needle and switching to longer needle only if needed. It is required mostly in excessively morbid obese patients with BMI of more than 45. General anesthesia, uh, difficult airway preparedness is absolutely essential. Always call for experienced and additional hands as fatigue may set in with difficult mask ventilation. Uh, always uh, use the specialized pillows or ramp or towel pads to give like this pose, ramp position in order to avoid the uh, um, obstruction and also to align the laryngeal view. Optim, uh, prepare difficult airway card preparedness, which should include variety of masks, airways, stubby handle, video laryngoscope, fluva, bougie, and laryngeal mask airway with gastric drainage, that is the proceal LMA and intubating LMA are absolutely essential. Flexible fiber optic emergency cricothyroid homicide and high flow oxygen delivery equipments like Thrive, HFNC, and jet ventilation should be kept ready. Optimum pre-oxygenation is very essential to reach the target end tidal oxygen level of 95% and rapid sequence induction and intubation with the standard uh, agents can be done. However, if the first attempt at intubation fails, second attempt has to be done by an experienced anesthesiologist with all best possible available gadgets or opt for uh, supraglottic devices that is Proceal LMA, which has been reported as a very successful rescue technique in obese parturians. However, during all this while, uh, no desaturation should be uh, maintained and this can be done by using supplemental oxygenation during apnea using either a nasal cannula 15 liters oxygen or using thrive ida guidelines for unanticipated or anticipated difficult tracheal intubation in obstetric has to be strictly followed and they also stress on using the supraglottic devices with a gastric drainage as the rescue technique in obstetrics and also uh, no desaturation with uh, high oxygen flow has to be maintained during all the procedures and during apnea. Intraoperatively to improve oxygenation, PEEP can be added and extubation should be always in fully awake, pain-free and semi-sitting position. A multimodal analgesia technique is recommended for optimum post-operative analgesia which may include variety of drugs and regions. These patients are prone for post-operative pulmonary complications, hypoxemia, pneumonia, and optimum pain control, physiotherapy, incentive spirometry, and also CPAP may be required in certain number of patients. These patients, even myocardial infarction, arrhythmias is common, and hence monitoring in HDU and pulmonary embolism, uh, for pulmonary embolism, thromboprophylaxis, early ambulation, optimum glycemic control is essential. So, uh, HDU monitoring and prevent now the early treatment and prevention of complications is essential for the best possible outcome in these patients. Thus, to conclude, morbidly obese parturians, they have compounded risk and pose significant challenges. Additional experience, help and multidisciplinary approach is necessary. Adequate optimization, early labor analgesia is indicated and CSE is the technique of choice for cesarean section with absolute preparation for GA and difficult intubation management. Always have backup of a backup alternative plan and prepare to conduct the backup plans. Ensure appropriate post-operative care. Thank you very much. These are few references. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Minal, for an excellent presentation. Uh, 
Uh, I think we will go on for discussion for some time because uh, the Farhan Nisan is released. The National IIT office bearers have yet to join. So can we discuss it any more? Can we go ahead with discussion, Madam? Yes, yes, Dr. Minal, it was a very good. Hello. Yes. Yes, yes Madam. Thank you. It was a very good discussion. I just wanted to know. This patient had an another compounding problem. Yes. Am I heard? Am I heard well? Yes, madam. Yes, ma'am. The, the patient was COVID positive. Yes, yes, ma'am. So I just was interested in knowing what was the extent of the COVID pulmonary involvement. Uh, yes, madam. This was during the second wave of COVID, and when we first saw the patient, even we were clueless whether the low saturation was only due to the obesity and OSA or it was due to the COVID lung involvement. But however, CT and X-ray was not done. Uh, in the post-operative period, she required how uh, the continued CPAP and other management, and then we did her CT scan. But her lung score was not as bad. They were around four and was eight, and she was manageable. But her problem problem was compounded mainly due to obesity and what was the about thromboprophylaxis yes madam the low molecular weight heparin was started uh, second no, no, before. before surgery before so surgery it was not madam patient was admitted on the same day and was taken in view of fetal distress immediately so it was not given it was not possible to give before so please explain how if the patient is because such patients even high risk obstetric patients can be on prophylactic thromboprophylaxis and if they come for emergency cesarean, then we have to follow a certain protocol. So can you explain it to our listeners? Yes, madam. The ASRA guidelines are very clear and we can follow that. That if patients during antenatal assessment, if there are any uh, evidence of deep vein thrombosis, uh, we can do a venous Doppler in high-risk patients or those who have calf tenderness or breathlessness. If there is already evidence of DVT, we may start the pharmacological prophylaxis right from the preoperative period and accordingly, a patient may go in for either Either vaginal or delivery or this is a, if they are going for operative delivery we need to give a break and uh, then stop it and then again resume it according to the guidelines however if patient does not have overt uh, um, venous thrombosis or any other complication only a mechanical uh, uh, maybe a stocking zonal that is indicated in the preoperative period and postoperatively according to the uh, how the patient behaves in drop if there is excessive blood loss patient is not going to be ambulatory for some time in the post-op period, then again the pharmacologic may be instituted. Yeah, right. And one more important thing is, what was the consent that you had taken from this patient when the patient proceeded with the... Because it uh, is extremely important. See, the yes. obese patients can come out with so many complications. And nowadays with increasing chances of litigation, yes. it is extremely essential how much and how far you explain to the patients with patient or patient's relatives about yes. the possibility of complications. Yes, madam. We took informed, written, valid consent and complications related to the uh, surgery itself, the patient's pre-procedural uh, uh, pro condition, which included the obesity and all the comorbidities. She had PIH on two drugs uh, she was on. Uh, then she had gestational diabetes mellitus with highly uncontrolled sugars. So COVID also added to uncontrolled sugar. It was absolutely difficult to control her sugars even in the post-operative period. And it has been documented in COVID. Uh, so we took the consent related to all these comorbidities that they may uh, escalate and cause uh, the bad perioperative outcome. So uh, another thing we took consent related to the technique of anesthesia that for our first choice is definitely the uh, regional and we are trying that however due to, to technical difficulty or any other problem we may have to go in for GA and the high risk in view of difficult airway post-operative ICU care and ventilatory support was also explained even we had explained the life-threatening perioperative complications to these right. patients yes, yes. and even COVID related complications so we had taken all these points in the answer in the chat box there is a question for you if the patient comes with fetal distress, even then, would you go ahead with CSE or a simple spinal? Uh, 
uh yes madam we would definitely go ahead with csc because many a times we have observed if we discuss actual problems and everything with the obstetrician the time actually taken uh you know to shift the patient from actually diagnose fetal distress shift the patient to ot on table and actually do and in that if we plan regional technique it will add on only three minutes more maximum exactly. so definitely that is not going to change in fact it is going to improve the perioperative outcome so we definitely in case if there is any particular reason wherein we just cannot then we may go ahead for gr otherwise you, yes yes even in emergency and fetal distress we go ahead in fact in obese patients needle through needle csc has been uh, documented to be very quick and easier technique rather than uh, the spinal uh, which is challenge now i just want your opinion on one thing in cac we don't uh, uh, we don't prove that the epidural catheter is in the place right because we give the spinal and the yes, traction come yes yes so yes. how would you how can you circumvent this problem because sometimes if the catheter is not in the epidural space and when you want to extend the level it's very true that it should be a combined technique no doubt about it because then we can titrate the level but uh, how can you go about it i mean is there yes, any other technique uh, luckily we have not faced it in this patient or any other patient we have used and um, most of the times uh, with um, our uh, the, the initial spinal and only one greater top up we could able to manage yeah, yeah. however since test dose is not given initially at the big placement uh, but before any top up we definitely give a test dose to confirm the correct positioning and to rule out any mal position of the catheter and then we go ahead uh, but if at all if it is not working and the duration is extending we may have to think of uh, supplementing with other yeah. they have dis described one more technique that is uh, Uh, DPE, I think. Um, uh, am I right? Is uh, it There is a puncture of the epidural space. Dose is not given spinally, and then yes. like CSE only. Yes, yeah, usually it is used in the labor analgesia, yeah, madam. Where yeah, in the yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, wherein we actually just give a puncture, and yeah. uh, uh, we use the epidural uh, catheter only, and do not give any drug through the. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, yeah however for cesarean section we would prefer definitely a low dose spinal so as to have a fast immediate onset and then right absolutely true because even in csc we are going in the needle to needle so actually we are assured that the catheter is in the epidural space anyway that i wanted you to discuss that particular technique that's why i asked you this question thank you thank you madam yeah. any other questions i think there were few in the chat box one i could read if i can comment a little on madam's uh, presentation yes sir please please uh, But... my compliments to dr harde you did an excellent job and you hardly left anything for the moderators to talk on point is a time has come where in municipal hospital also now we have started getting obese patients it is not that it was they were coming only in uh, higher centers or private practice but they are now coming even in municipal hospitals and it is becoming quite frequent and quite difficult because uh, there are at least nair hospital is very well equipped but the peripheral hospitals where i work the world advanced laryngoscopes and bronchoscopes and all is uh, not to be commented on so it's not easy to manage this case in private another thing that happens is the trouble starts from the iv line the trouble starts from the conical arm that they have where the bp instrument is not going to fit there are so many different our tables are not suitable for them the trolley shifting trolleys are not suitable i i did just a couple of weeks back 138 kg or something 38 uh, bmi but as you rightly said long spinal needle is not required only one side to nick the skin a little because i was entering the space but the skin was throwing my needle back so eventually so then the flow will stop the moment i leave that needle the flow will stop so i nick the skin a little and uh, manage to push my needle about half centimeter inside so that's the only time in so such so many uh, efforts that i have uh, not been able to do with a st uh, standard needle the so standard needle is good enough so as the neck is concerned 
invariability is not so difficult all the uh, obesity is below these lines so this part is nice and clear invariably even uh, for my routine bariatric surgeries that i see we rarely find that that neck though that we see of course when you cross bm bm uh, high of uh, 50s and all those things you know where you see a patient of 252 kg and when there is hardly any neck and everything is folded and folded and folded but invariably in parturients we don't uh, luckily see they are quite young they are not yet reached that stage but otherwise very nicely done of course uh, stockings are absolutely mandatory and uh, csc yes as dr palikawal said it does take little longer time but if it is possible to give nothing like it because we do not know how the closure will take place it is not easy to close that abdomen there are layers and layers upon uh, of fat over there very nicely done thank you very much all the best to you thank you sir thank you very much Anita, please discuss the questions in the chat box. Dr. Yes, yes. Actually, so, uh, Bhat sir and uh, Kerkar madam, I, there is a question that though there is critical risk, uh, so you uh, you feel that still you should go for combined spinal epidural, though there is a fetal distress because uh, it might help in the closure and it might take long. Sir, you are muted. Bhat sir. It will be ideal to put a CSC, but believe me, you cannot feel anything on the back. You are not going to yes. get ultrasound machine, and you are not going to on the spot diagnose it. इतने में तो आप खोल के एक बार शायद डाल दे ना एपिडोल, because when you cannot even locate that space, you have to just blindly, as Dr. Bala Venkat puts, post your superior Alex spine and put that needle, and then the needle cover on the top it and go blindly inside. You will hit the mark that you want. I have successfully done that, as Dr. Bala Venkat has very rightly said. You know. so if you cannot feel that you have to try that technique it really goes a simple spinal little additional bupurgesic that i like like to put it gives me half an hour extra of anesthesia and uh, i have not gone for csc no never it's not that easy because number one it is not going to be easy to acquire a csc set in private so i have to then give sequential one level epidural one level spinal and all so that again is not going to be of much use so simple spinal and uh, of course in private the surgeons are also Uh, they understand many other things also. It's not that they are trainees and all. They really work fast, you know. Of course, but I have seen uh, people working in my Shadabdi hospital. They finish six and in twenty-five minutes also. So yeah, it's not that uh, in in private they are faster, but in institutions also they are very efficient and very fast people. So time is not a real constraint. It yes. uh, really does a good job over there. But uh, yes, you have to keep in mind that if it doesn't work, then what? So CSC is a good technique. But on paper, I would go for a simple, straightforward spinal. As Dr. Harde said, uh, again, standard dose. Or don't reduce the dose with the fear that it will give lesser. Because if that anesthesia becomes little lesser, you are in deeper trouble. I would rather give a full dose and then give ramp position to uh, control my level. So, how much bupivacan would you like to give, sir? Because as obese patients, uh, we want to give lesser dose. Uh, yes, sir. Means normally I give 2.2 uh, ml. But in this case, I will still give two ml at least, if not two point two. If it's real short, then maybe two point two. Otherwise, two point two, I will still go for. So I'll accept Minan, little higher level. Yeah, Dr. Minal said that she would like to reduce the dose by twenty five percent. So that is over and above because as it is, you give half the dose of uh, bupivacan in uh, for no, the analysis. Dr. Dr. Minal said that even she would like to use the full dose. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. I have mentioned it is it has been mentioned that twenty five percent reduction. However, dose need not to be reduced. You just have to limit the capillary spread. That's right. Just give the ramp position does the job. There is another question in the chat box. Yes. LMW is given. Uh, what will be our stand for fetal distress uh, if there is a fetal distress in uh, posterior for seizure in section? hello yes I, i heard that question but somehow invariably we have not seen patients who are getting uh, low molecular weight uh, hyperin because they are basically mobile they really do not get uh, uh, that uh, thromboembolic events and if they are getting it and then of course the whole line of treatment is going to shift totally i would rather go for a general anesthesia straight way and uh, doing bariatric surgeries every day we are not uh, Uh, bothered about giving ga we are used to it but still cesarean section multiple problems and madam's patient was lucky to have covid also a real challenge 
nobody wants to go near that patient and she had to anesthetize that patient that is since were very creditable a big thing yes is really you know, if the patient is receiving low molecular weight heparin we yeah. just have to check uh, when the last dose was given yes yeah that is uh, yeah. and depending on that you can decide about whether to give a regional or not madam can we straight away give spinal anesthesia with a vitacor 25 needle or an experienced yes, anesthesiologist yes. giving a single shot spinal anesthesia true. it's unlikely yes, yes. to cause any problems rather than giving an epidural i would still yes. go, go ahead with a spinal if the risk versus benefit analysis shows me that giving ga in an unfasted obese patient in right. the middle of the night when i'm doing the case alone in a small right. nursing right. home i would like right. to stick to spinal anesthesia i agree I with you I agree Only with you. Only thing is, we will have to monitor the patient very closely after yes. the surgery, and yes. we have to, uh, you know, whichever nursing home it may be, but we have to make the nursing home staff aware of yeah. checking oh. the return of the power to the lower limbs. Yes. You know, no, obstetrician, obstetrician are giving, obstetricians are now giving regularly the L L M W in many patients. Yeah. Yeah, yes. True. One more point I wanted to make, uh, Doctor Mina Harde. you said about the preoperative assessment now suppose this patient would have come for a private practice labor analgesia i would like to make a point that we may end up doing the preop assessment about the airway when the patient came to me first but now the labor has progressed okay i have given an epidural i am conducting the labor analgesia it has acted very well she is now going to for a cesarean section because suddenly the fetal heart rates have dropped the point here is that all of us should understand that we must do the airway assessment again on the table because here after 4 hours she is a preeclamptic patient on antihypertensive there is edema the the airway can change dramatically so your psc which you have done about the preoperative airway assessment may not hold true so just remember to do one more preoperative assessment malampatti scoring check your mpc 4321 keep your plan a b c d ready ask for a help and then induce the case yes how uh, um hello how routinely the practice of asking for help should become more common because yeah. tackling such cases independently it is always better to have expert help you know if required because if you have to uh do the intubation it is always better to have some means sir in your practice i am sure you will have two anesthetists yeah. for such a case i always have two anesthetists for every case that i have Perfect. welcome dr navin malotra i am we are very happy to have you with us on yeah. the board of maharashtra yeah. and uh, i yes, can't agree less with hemant because yeah. in private practice i have always mentioned in all conferences in private practice there is only one indication of general anesthesia for cesarean section and that is second failed spinal mm -hmm. okay. because in the middle of the night you are not going to get any help you are not going to get manpower and material power and nothing you are going to get and you will be stuck like anything even if the patient is having an acute eclamptic fit at that time yet in private practice small nursing home practice this still remains choice of anesthesia for most of us who are practicing solely in small nursing homes how routinely sir you do echocardiography in this obese patient hello it is not really done routinely no i don't think so hemon do you recommend that see uh, dr yogen uh, i know where avinash is going yeah routinely see in an emergency it would be very difficult again depending upon the setup now she did the case in nair hospital where you can get everything under the get everything yes yes but yeah. you and me like yogen sir and me we if we are not working in a tertiary care on that particular day and this case comes it's very difficult for us to get a 2d a code done but if she complains of breathlessness it is better you go ahead and get it done but again in emergency it's going to be very difficult to get a cardiologist who will you do a 2d echo so it's it, but again your your uh, hocms and all are extremely common in these patients and you may land up in problem later on so you got to be very careful your clinical assessment has to be very good and well two three of the hospital And and leave aside uh, but when, the, when the patient has been referred, you must ask for 2D echo. Yeah. And yes. HOs, uh, 
uh, this uh, cardiomyopathy consent also that's what i am meant to ask dr meenal ki that also has to be explained to the patient even though, even though not frightening uh, in the frightening world but we have to inform the patient what all possible complications can take place and the setup has to be very very good again again i am saying this please don't do these cases in a small place transfer the case to a tertiary care center or transfer everything like your manpower help and the work everything should be ready in that setup and then only you can do this case in that setup manisha madam our guests are waiting yes yes um, we can actually carry on the discussion after second Uh, please. I want to say the same because our uh, uh, respected dignitaries, National ISA President Dr. Venkat Giri and Secretary uh, Dr. Navin Malhotra sir, and our own Vice President Dr. Anjali Bhuri has already logged in. So let us begin with the program of uh, Maharashtra State Chapter ISA Misanis, that is the newsletter, uh, that is the first issue of our academy, our tenure that is going to get released today. With the hands of all national ISA dignitaries. May I request Dr. Maya Bhavera, Madam, to continue with the program? Yes, yes. Maya, Madam. Yeah, yeah. Good evening, all of you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, Madam. Yes, madam. But you were uh, there is a problem in uh, voice and uh, you were uh, slide also. Uh, slide, uh, Mr. Abhijit has shared, and my and my voice is voice clear, clear or not? Voice is also echo actually, Dr. Maya. Yes. Echo to your uh -huh. voice. Voice uh, is not clear. Have you logged in from two devices, Hi, madam? Uh, if you have logged in from two devices, please. Uh, Please, from, no, uh, sorry to disturb. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but I will request everybody else to please mute their mics and uh, Maya, ma'am, then try once. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Ha. Huh. Can you hear me clearly now? Hello. Yes. Yes. There is a disturbance. There is some disturbance because I have logged in from uh, only one device. Uh, okay. There is a background issue from someone else's uh, mic. So, requesting you to please uh, turn off their mics, please. It's okay now. Yes, yes it's, it's okay. Perfect, perfectly fine. It yes. go ahead, madam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On behalf of MSC ISA, I, Dr. Maya Bhale Rao, President ISA Pimpri Chinswar, take the opportunity to welcome you all in the release program of inaugural issue of MISA News. It's a great pleasure to have. i say national dignitaries on the digital dais today a very warm and cordial welcome to respected dr venkat giri sir president i say national dr anjali bhure madam vice president i say national dr navin malhotra sir honorary secretary i say national a warm welcome to msc i say office bearers dr manisha katikar president dr anita nehte vice president dr hk sare sir president elect Dr Avinash Bosle honorary secretary Dr Samir Sohani honorary treasurer and today's celebrity Dr Hemant Shinde as a editor I welcome respected uh, Kalpana Kalpana Kerkar madam and Dr Yogen Bhat sir also a warm welcome to all delegates any auspicious program always commences with a lamp lighting ceremony so i invite all the dignitaries to join for deepa prachulan on virtual platform mr akhilesh uh, please lamp lighting ceremony video please sound sound lamp symbol light symbolizes knowledge wisdom and truth tamaso ma jyotir gamaya which means we have to move from darkness to light knowledge is the everlasting inner wealth by which all our outer achievements can be accomplished hence 
we light up the lamp to go down to the knowledge as greatest form of wealth. A single lamp can light hundred more, just as a man can enlighten and give us the knowledge to many more. And so today, so true today for our MISA news also. Thank you all dignitaries. Friends, COVID has changed our lifestyle and we humans have adapted the changes very quickly. In the COVID pandemic, apart from COVID duties, MSC ISA members are participating in activities organized by MSC ISA. May it be an academic activity or non-academic activity like Diwali celebration or Sankranti celebration. Recently, we had a Sankranti celebration. Uh, I would like, I request Akhilesh to play a small uh, video about our Sankranti celebration. Akhilesh, uh, can we have a sound, please? Akhilesh? Thank you, uh, Akhilesh. This Diwali celebration or the Sankranti celebration is happening because of our ever enthusiastic, ever charming president, Dr. Manisha Katikar and her entire team. She is the founder editor of MISA News. And this MISA News was first time published in 2008. The glorious journey of MISA News goes on since then. The legacy is well carried by various able editors. And now Dr. Heman Shinde, a multifaceted, multi-talented persona has taken the responsibility as an editor of MISA News this year. I request all the dignitaries to have the release program of our MISA News. Dr. Naveen Malhotra sir, Dr. Venkat Giri sir, Dr. Anjali Bure madam, and MSC ISA office bearers, please join hands for the release of the MISA News virtually. Uh, Akhilesh, can you scroll the MISA News uh, copy? Yes, yes, thank you so much. You can go ahead, Akhilesh. You just scroll it. Yeah, thank you.
Akhilesh, some uh, can you have some music here? Ha, music. Uh, I think. Uh, have you added the? Uh, can we have a sound also? I think sound is also uh, very low. Okay, it will finish. Maya, madam, we will continue with further program. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ISA National Dignitaries, for this release. And this is a fantastic creation. Uh, this is a really challenging task to uh, organize such a huge data so meticulously with a great. Hello, Maya. Yeah, thank you, Hello. ISA National Dignitaries. Thank you so much. It was a really fantastic uh, compilation, and it must be a challenging task to organize such a huge data so meticulously. With a great pleasure, I invite Dr. Shinde to unwind this journey of compilation of MISA news. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much for that, Maya Madam. Thank you. And uh, yes, I uh, have become the MISA news editor for these next two years. And it's a fascinating journey as you and as you rightly mentioned, I have difficult shoes to fill in because our previous uh, editors have been Dr. Kathikar Madam, Dr. Anita Madam and so many of them, they have done a wonderful job since 2008. About this particular issue, this is the first issue of the MISA news and uh, when we decided we had an extensive discussion with uh, Kathikar Madam as well as Anita as well as uh, uh, our secretary Aminash Bosle, and we decided to come out with a non-academic issue. The first issue being non-academic, uh, we were a little skeptical and the theme then we decided was to go for the VAT celebrations. As we know that the job of MISA News is academic as well as non-academic, but we need to uh, percolate the schemes of National ISA which is doing a great job under the leadership of Venkat Giri sir as well as Navin Malhotra sir. And it is coming down, we had to spread it across to the Maharashtra state last uh, members. We've got 32 branches, 2022 of them are extremely active. And we've shown that Maharashtra state has shown that in coming as number one state in the various categories and overall state number one state in the annual conference. So we wanted the healthy competition to continue. This year we have got 78 prizes we would definitely reach, want to reach the three figure mark next year. So to create this healthy atmosphere, a competition amongst ourselves, we decided to come out with this VAD issue whereby we will have celebrations also included in it. And under the various categories, whosoever has won something or the other, we have tried to include all those data and why they have won under what category, which will stimulate further people to apply and to do things for the next year. Having said that, I would also like to say a certain thing about a, one particular promise I still remember I had made from Nagpur. Like we've got plethora of seniors with us. Right now also we've got Kelkar Madam sitting with us with, with phenomenal amount of experience. Now they are our heritage. They are our past as well as present and they will also be our future. But how many of our juniors really know about the amount of work they have done? So I have included one such person this time in this particular issue. Now this was Dr. Bojraj. Dr. Bojraj sir, I had the pleasure of working with her, him in, uh, in uh, Bombay Hospital with her for a brief stint. I had it in uh, 1990. Now sir has done phenomenal work. So his daughter is also an anesthesiologist who has written about him. Now, sir is no more. This would have been his 102nd birth centenary this year. So the data has been included in this particular uh, MISA news. And I continue, I want to do it for our various seniors. I would like the members to come out with their a particular junior writing about the senior person and their contribution to the faculty of anesthesiology in the future issues also I would like to include. And one more thing I would like to talk about the future issue is the next issue will be about complications in anesthesia. Now anesthesia is a science. 
in science we don't restrict our data we don't withheld our facts we share our facts so with the amount of members we have in maharashtra state i am requesting all of you to send the complications which you have seen which you have managed what was your plan what was the case a brief history what were the investigations what did you plan what did you do how it went wrong and then what did you do to make it right even if it is an unfavorable outcome i'll see to it that your name doesn't come anywhere if you want to keep it a secret we will not give you a name but at least learn from our own mistakes and that would save many more lives i wish you all a very happy healthy and prosperous and a very safe new year because this is the first meeting in the probably in the uh, new year and i stop at this moment and kindly help me in future thank you very much thank you sir thank you so much and we should congratulate uh, you as a editor uh, dr manisha madam as a president dr avinash bosle dr anita all uh, msc isa office bearers and i would like to have a, a clap and uh, akhilesh can you please share the slide yes and uh, shinde sir you have rightly mentioned that we should reach to the uh, roots so basically each and every member should contribute to this misa news and we will definitely try and you have a great leadership uh, with uh, like uh, this all msc isa office bearers and you are going to have a great uh, uh, issues ahead and you know any bulletin is the voice of our co colleagues it not only reflects the creativity talent but it connects the people as you have already said and it bridges the gap it minimizes the gap between the organization and its members so definitely this uh, misa news is going to reduce the gap thank you so much and once again heartiest congratulations to all uh, msc isa office bearers and misa news uh, team thank you so much and most probably i think within a day or two this uh, um uh, bulletin will be in our hands in our email and whatsapp and do let us know the feedback so that dr shinde will have a better and better uh, issues in coming years coming ones thank you sir now i invite dr manisha katikar our dynamic beloved president of maharashtra state chapter to say few words and i'm sure the misa news is her baby and she, it is very close to her heart so let's listen from her what she says about the misa news over to you madam thank you maya madam yes as you said correctly misa news is a baby that is born when i was uh, like i was made the founder editor of misa news so i was welcome the respected dignitary respected national ice president dr venkat giri sir vice president dr anjali bure madam secretary dr navin malhotra sir we are missing dr ashok deshpande sir as he was not able to join because of some uh, family issues respected all maharashtra state chapter ice dignitary i must say that diet of maharashtra state uh, chapter ice is honored and humbled by the esteem presence of all national ice hockey dignitaries today is the 13th birthday of misa news as a, as a president of maharashtra state chapter ice i am overwhelmed today the baby of misa news was born in 2008 past president respected dr dilip parang sir was the mastermind behind the beginning of misa news i being the founder editor was engrossed in developing nurturing this baby till it was 4 years old then it was handed over to the in the safe hands of dr sarita gadkari gadkari madam continued further care and then it was our vice president dr anita nete madam who took over of that in dr anita nete madam uh, uh, madam senior the print issue was converted to e misa news and the baby was further nurtured as e misa news in her baby growth further continued in the tenure of dr shubhangi kothari madam so i have seen this news growing in leaps and bounds over the past span of 13 years and now dr shemin sindhe at the helm of this news i am sure that this newsletter will be converted to journal in the coming year we are arranging academic activities every month 
let it be master class class or the interactive sessions like this i request all the members to be a part of this and if you are interested to join please let us know long new maharashtra state chapter i say long device thank you so much thank you dr manisha uh, it is really a proud moment for you as well as for all of us and we are proud of you thank you so much now i request dr navin malhotra sir the great leader of all anesthesiologist of the country who is instrumental in taking the isa national at higher level sir has inspired many minds and ignited many souls in their life sir is a versatile iconic figure and having lots of bubbling enthusiasm and ideas he is a hard working strategic planner and believes in teamwork he is always he always inspires us sir we would like to listen from you about our misa news and about our msc isa over to you sir thank you the master of ceremony dr maya bale rao for such nice words uh, i know uh, you are a multifaceted multi talented personality and hats off to you the shining star of today dr hemant chinde uh, the editor of misa news it's a uh, today is 21st january 3 weeks of the new year and it's a hat trick of visit to maharashtra virtually it's a, it's, it's a third consecutive week that uh, some or the other program starting with the karad cme then thane cme and today the misa news uh, release so back to back in three weeks three online participations for the maharashtra state chapter and this speaks itself which dr himan chinde was talking about the three figure target which i have already given for the uh, maharashtra state chapter that they should vouch for it and really deserve it i extend greetings from chilly atmosphere of uh, rohtak at the isa national secretariat and i am really envious of dr vinash bosle where i can see the fan is in his background and i am having heater and just took over my cap also so that's the versatility of our country but that's the beauty of it dear dr venkatgiri president isc national uh, very respected dr anjali bhure vice president and uh, the office bearers of isc maharashtra chief chapter uh, dr manisha katekar i never knew today i came to know that it's your baby and you have been the uh, its uh, inaugural editor of misa news that speaks of your uh, multifaceted personality in both uh, academic clinical and research fields salutes to you ma'am and you are ably supported by very nice team of dr anita nete dr sale sir dr vinash bosle dr samir sohani and definitely uh, dr himant shinde and uh, also our own uh, dr anjali bhure madam who is vice president and dr desh pande they are all there to support you so it's dr himant shinde today is very auspicious day uh, today is uh, sakat chauth uh, the ganesh uh, uh, chaturthi or sakat chaturthi yes uh, in our part it is celebrated with uh, lots of fanfare it's a very auspicious day where parents keep fast for the well being of their children and they don't take a sip of water throughout the day and today you are releasing your inaugural issue on this very auspicious day i am very sure misa news will soon be and develop from e newsletter to a journal because the works which are done with good intent and started on auspicious day definitely they bear good results and i am really happy that i am here uh, witnessing this release yes when i was in pimpri chintwad on 5th january 20 19 uh, i happened yes. to meet dr shubhangi kothari also uh, and she uh, was also very passionate about uh, misa news so i am very sure you will carry on the legacy of the editors and uh, take it as a holistic issues and your theme of the inaugural issue is very very nice and of the upcoming issue on complications is also excellent so i congratulate all the team members of isa msc from isa national for on the release of uh, misa news and on in on its 13th birthday so it's uh, becoming a teenager now and i know uh, i am very sure it will be a soon a full fledged uh, adult journal and uh, uh, taking care of 
the academics, clinics, and research. Uh, I'm thankful for inviting you me here. Long live ISA, Jai ISCN, Jai Hind. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Sir, thank you so much for your kind words, your blessings, and your motivation to all of us. Thank you so much. We are really very lucky to have you as our ISA National Honorary Secretary. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it's really a proud feeling when we meet and uh, we see our dear leader and vice president, ISA National, uh, Dr. Anjali Bure, madam. She's a very charming, friendly, and humble person. And I feel whenever she is there with me, I feel I am with my elder sister or I am with my very close friend. Thank you, madam, for giving us that feeling. Thank you so much. And it's our honor to have your comments and compliments or maybe some your uh, opinion about Misa News. Over to you, madam. Anjali Bure, madam. Madam, unmute yourself. She is saying that she is unable to unmute herself. So the uh, somebody has to allow her to unmute. Yeah. Yes, I Madam. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, Maya. A pleasant evening to all the attendees. Honorable President Dr. Venkatgiri, sir. Honorary Secretary, our own Dr. Naveen Malhotra, sir. Office bearers of Maharashtra State Chapter, ISA. Dr. Manisha Katikar, Madam. Anita Nete, Ma'am. Dr. Saleh, sir. Dr. Avinash Bhosle, Dr. Samir Soni, and today's star, Dr. Heman Shinde, editor Misa News, uh, Kalpana Kekar Ma'am, and Yogen Bhat sir. I would like to compliment all who were and are part of Misa News for the dedication and commitment, and also for taking this newsletter so high. It is great pleasure to celebrate the release of first issue of this tenure under the able leadership of Dr. Heyman Shinde, whose very enthusiastic and dynamic personality, our editor, Misa News. Contribution of the members in Misa News in academic field, highlighting the major events, achievements, has made this newsletter a very popular one in our state. So heartiest congratulations, Dr. Heyman Shinde, sir, for a bright beginning and wishing a rewarding success to Dr. Manisha Kartikar and her team for their future endeavors. Thanking you for inviting me to join you today on 13th happy birthday of Misa News. Long live ISA, long live ISCN. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anjali, madam, for such a nice words. Thank you so much, friends. The moments are always cherished when you are blessed with good wishes from the supreme authorities. I remember when we had release of our Fimpri Chinsert Bulletin last month, for the very first time, we had received message with a personal names. And I was very much elated. And that message was from the man who has a clear vision. He is a dynamic persona. He is approachable. He is assertive. And he is proactive. Yes. I'm talking about none other than our beloved president, ISA National, respected Venkat Girisaw. I request her to address the August gathering with presidential speech. Over to you, Venkat Girisaw. President of today's uh, meeting, uh, Dr. Manisha Katikar, National Vice President, Dr. Anjali Bure, Secretary, Dr. Naveen, uh, Dr. Desh Pandey, GC member in his absentia, Office bearers of uh, ISA Maharashtra, dear friends, compiler and uh, MC Dr. Maya, editor uh, Dr. Shinde, and all friends in Maharashtra. Namaste. I'm happy to participate in this uh, release of the inaugural issue of this CS, Misa News. It is 13 year old. Yes, it was, uh, yes, as I heard that it was earlier. Print then became E. Now there is a demand that it should become a Naveen telling full fledged journal. With so much activity, I was thinking once or further, why don't you start Western Zone Journal? I, uh, because we have already started the uh, Zone Journals. And uh, I think definitely you should, with the, so much academics and all, uh, make it very active and uh, uh, start the Western Zone Journal, uh, which is not started because uh, Central Zone and North Zone have already started. 
and South Zone is on its way, and uh, I think you should start that with this. And as Dr. Shinde told, uh, this is uh, uh, um, topic based or some uh, every issue at this time is non initiation, next time complication like that. That's good that people can have reading that. More than that, what I feel is that uh, individual or case management for private practitioners, because uh, how Dr. Yogen Bhatt was telling and uh, addition was there by Dr. Shinde and all, how we manage the cases different in different places, he was explaining. And uh, I think the journal should contain that also so that the common practitioners should know that what we read in textbooks is ideal for the medical college and ideal setup. All or not that relate to work in the medical college or in the ideal setup. We have to work in the periphery. Though whatever the, they say that we have this and all, we should have the minimum. Though we should have the optimum or the best amount, of time, we should have the minimum. We should be able to do in the minimum the best service which we can give. See, when I studied, there was no monitor, only hand on pulse. And now that, that now even a junior comes, sir, he's not able to manage the case uh, without a workstation or without a multi para monitors. Yeah, hand on pulse is not there. Clinical, we should tell that also. That's always that machine can fail, but we should not fail, we should be there. So that also should be there. Plus, as you said that non-anesthesia topics, we have to teach her. I always tell in our meeting that we should know how to live this life. It is not only giving anesthesia, other things. Okay, family life, then crisis management, all this should be. Maybe with the good article with that, it will be very, very popular. I wish all the best for this. And thank you once again for inviting me. And as Naveen told, this is also mine also third consecutive presence in uh, this thing. Maybe I would have attended because I remember personally attending in uh, uh, different places in Maharashtra during my uh, secretaryship and attending you all. I remember uh, Dr. Maya's place coming there and attending there then Pune. Maybe yes. if it uh, allows after some time, I will again uh, start journey and visit you all personally and it will be enjoyable. Thank you once again, all the best. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, you are most uh, welcome in Pimpri Chinswad city, in Maharashtra, at different places. And our president has uh, planned so many programs and there are so many uh, events. So you are going to definitely come frequently and visit us and bless us. Thank you so much. Now it's time to say BWU. I take the opportunity to extend my gratitude to ISA national dignitaries, Dr. Venkat Giri sir, Dr. Anjali Bure madam, Dr. Naveen Malhotra sir, for taking out time in their busy schedule and to be with us for this inaugural program. Thank you so much, ISA national dignitaries. Thank you, uh, actually Ashok Deshpande sir, we are missing him. Thank you, MSC ISA office bearers, uh, Dr. Manisha, Dr. Uh, Sare sir, Dr. Anita Nete, Dr. Bosle, Dr. Samir Sohni, and Dr. Heman Shinde for giving us such a wonderful issue. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Manisha. Special thanks for giving me the opportunity to be with you all as a part of this event. Thank you all delegates for joining this memorable program. Thank you, Abhijit, for smooth and flawless technical support. And thank you, uh, I hand over these dials to Dr. Manisha Katikar uh, or the uh, MSC ISA office bearer for further proceedings. Long live ISA, long live MSC ISA and stay happy, stay healthy and be in touch with everyone. Thank you so much and thanks. Abhijit, thank you slide once again. Thank you, thank you. Over to you, Manisha, madam. Thank you so much, Maya, madam. Thanks a lot for anchoring this session so flawlessly and so nicely. In two days, you prepared everything and you are with us and we really enjoyed your anchoring this uh, function. We'll continue with our we will continue with our second semi-clinical case. Dr. Madam and Yogan Bhatt, sir, uh, we will continue with the second case and then we will, we will go on for the discussion for both the cases. So, may I request Dr. Anushri, madam? Uh, yes, ma'am. I will share my pres uh, presentation. Just wait, wait, wait. Hello? 
I hand over the mic to Dr. Sunil Soni to introduce Dr. Anushu, ma'am. Thank you, Marisa. Uh, uh, Dr. Sir, the second speaker uh, is Dr. Anushu Choudhary. She is assistant professor from Government Medical College, Meerut. She has done her MBBS, MD Anesthesia, and DMD. Uh, she has already have four publications in various journals, uh, national and uh, international. She has won many prizes uh, in her uh, career till now. Uh, recently included uh, teachers category award in uh, at, uh, our uh, state conference held at uh, Nagpur also. And she is also having extracurricular uh, activities like poetry and uh, sketching. So, uh, Maya, Madam, uh, one more candidate is there from our cultural and art side. So, I request Dr. Anushri, Madam, to present her case now. Over to you, Dr. Anushri. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for the introduction. Yes, your screen is visible, madam. Yes, sir. Yes, your slides are visible. Yes, sir. Yes, visible. Please go ahead, madam. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, slides are visible, madam. Yes, yes. Uh, first of all, I'm very thankful for giving me this opportunity to present uh, my approach of the anesthetic management of a 55-year-old hypertensive morbidly obese patient who has been posted for exploratory laparotomy. Uh, obesity, as ma'am has told, has become a global epidemic. Over the last 40 years, the prevalence has increased by three times. Worldwide, 650 million adults are obese, whereas in India, 153 million have abdominal obesity, according to an ICMR India B study, which was done in 2015. Morbidly obese patient is a patient with a BMI of more than 35 with comorbid illness or a BMI of more than 40 without any significant comorbidity. BMI can be measured as weight in kgs upon height in meters square. Uh, recently, a term has been coined that is obesity paradox. It applies to the class 1 and class 2 obese patients and it emphasizes the fact that a BMI alone does not put a patient in a high risk category. It is the BMI, higher BMI associated with comorbid illnesses and uh, airway difficulty, which puts a patient in a high risk category. So we have to understand central and peripheral obesity. The commonly used terms, as we all know, is apple and pear shaped body. Uh, apple shaped body, when the uh, fat is located in the abdominal cavity, it is more metabolically active and it contributes to the presence of various comorbid illnesses like cardiovascular diseases, thrombosis, metabolic syndrome. According to WHO, a waist circumference of more than 102 centimeters in male or 90 centimeter in Asian males and 88 centimeters in females or 80 centimeter in Asian females uh, is uh, said to be a uh, uh, definition of central obesity. So we have to understand our obese patient, whether the patient is having metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular disease, obstructive sleep apnea, or an OHA, or difficult airway, respiratory diseases, venous thromboembolism, and hyperglycemia. So coming to metabolic syndrome, what is metabolic syndrome? It is nothing but a cluster of conditions which have similar pathophysiology. According to the National Cholesterol Education Program, Adult Treatment Panel 3, a, com a definition which is... Uh, a definition is used. It states that if three of the following five criteria are present, then the patient is said to have metabolic syndrome. Uh, central obesity along with hypertension, increased fasting triglycerides and fasting blood sugar and decreased uh, fasting HDL. Now, it is important to know because these patients are having higher risk of post-operative cardiac complications, pulmonary complications. They have poor glycemic control. In fact, most of them are associated with type 2 diabetes, which may lead to post-operative infections in them. Obese patients may have increased blood pressure or if OSA is untreated, they may have pulmonary hypertension and signs of heart failure. Also, fatty infiltration of the conducting system makes them prone for arrhythmias. Uh, obesity is a prothrombotic state. The patient may be associated with myocardial infarction, stroke, or venous thromboembolism. 
tend venous thrombembolism is 10 times higher in obese women and the risk extends beyond 2 weeks post operatively so we have to be careful in the post of care too patients having perioperative hyperglycemia are more prone to pneumonia systemic blood infections urinary tract infections skin infections and renal failure Various studies have been done in which they found that if post-operative day one, the blood glucose levels are more than 220, the infection rate is three to six times. Coming to the respiratory system, because of obesity and fat around the uh, different organs, they have reduced functional residual capacity and they are more prone to atelectasis and shunting in the dependent lung regions. But these patients have increased resting metabolic rate, work of breathing and minute oxygen demand. Now, this combination is very serious and once there is cessation of breathing, the arterial oxygen levels decrease rapidly as compared to normal patients. Also, they may have airway closure at rest, which we may find as V's. So, the red flags are if the saturation on air is less than 95, if PFTs are available and function uh, uh, FVC and FEV1 in one second are decreased, if the patient is having respiratory V's at rest, or in ABG, the serum bicarb levels are high, then they are more prone to post of hypoventilation or desaturation. Now, what is OSA? These patients, because of their uh, fat, they have increased sleep disordered breathing. So, if a BMI more than 35 with neck circumference, which is made up, measured at the level of Adam's apple, more than 17 inches or 40, 43 centimeters in male, or 41 centimeters and 16 inches is a female associated with loud snoring or observed pauses in breathing or awakening for, from sleep with choking sensation and frequent daytime somnolence, then the patient is most likely to have OSA. We have a very common stop bang score, which I'll discuss later. Now, what, why we should find out whether the patient is suffering from OSA because they have more chances of post-operative desaturation, respiratory failure. CPAP is very important in them pre-operatively and post-operatively. They may have difficulty in airway and laryngoscopy and they are more sensitive to sedative and opioid-induced respiratory depression. So mostly we should use an opioid sparing technique in them. Now this OSA may progress to become a obesity hypoventilation syndrome in which sleep disordered breathing along with obesity is associated with hypercapnia. So they are again, as I said, have more risk of respiratory arrest post-operatively or they may have cord pulmonary. So in pre-op evaluation, I'll quickly calculate the height weight of a patient and calculate the lean body weight. I'll see if the patient's having central obesity, uh, NYHA class of the patient, BP, if patient is having pedal edema, breath holding time, uh, I'll auscultate for V's, note the room air saturation, and I'll see if the patient is having OSA or uh, disordered sleep breathing. In investigations along with hemogram, I'll order RFT, LFTs, triglycerides, HDL, and blood sugar, ECG to see if there's any arrhythmias or STT changes, chest x-ray, ABG to find out bicarb and uh, CO2 levels. If a portable echo is available, it will give me a, a clue to the LV dysfunction if it's there and rule out DVT clinically or if a Doppler sonograph is at hand. So clinically by tenderness or if the calf circumference is more uh, or there is a high level of inactivity in the patient, then I'll be uh, alert. Preoperatively, this is the stop bank score which correlates with uh, obstructed sleep apnea. So I'll ask the patient if he snores loudly, if he falls asleep during daytime, If anybody, anybody has observed him stop his breathing during sleep, if he's having high blood pressure, BMI in more than 35, age more than 50 years, if the neck circumference is high, and if he's a male patient. So my patient uh, is a male patient, uh, more than 50 years, morbidly obese and hypertensive. So already four out of eight are uh, positive. If it's more than six, then it highly correlates with OSA, uh, moderate to severe OSA. Now coming to the airway assessment, bag mask ventilation in obese patients correlates with higher BMI, higher age, lack of teeth, snoring, presence of beard, malampati class three or four, and jaw protrusion severely limited. That is the patient is not able to bring his lower incisors in front of the upper incisors because then jaw thrust will become difficult. Uh, difficult tracheal intubation correlates very well with the neck circumference. Various studies have been done which show that higher the neck circumference, there's higher probability of difficulty in intubation. Also short neck, that is thyromental distance less than six, uh, decreased mouth opening, limited head and neck jaw movement, more BMI and malampati more than three. 
So in my patient, how I'll assess is I'll do see the lumpati grading, mouth opening, subluxation. That is, patients able to bring his incisors in front of upper incisors or not. Uh, Thyromental distance, neck movement. If it's less or more than ninety, then I'll uh, ensure that there are suitable trolley and operating table and table extensions available. Gel padding or any kind of padding to uh, prevent the pressure, uh, protect the pressure areas. Wide strapping, a large BP cuff. Equipment for ramping. I'll ensure there are many sheets to be put in uh, below the shoulder, neck, and head. Uh, then I'll I, if I have an NMT and base, then I'll use them. A monitor which is having a pressure mode is uh, helpful, and I'll use calf compression devices for a uh, uh, DVT as prophylaxis. I'll uh, prepare the difficult airway cart and keep different sizes of face mask, handles, blades, McCoy laryngoscope, bougies, especially ventilating bougies and stilets. oropharyngeal neuropharyngeal airway a nasogastric tube second generation uh, lms either lms supreme or uh, lma fast track or prosil then a ambu video laryngoscope one available with us is true view evo2 it is very good because it has a oxygen port through which you can give a continuous oxygen so the apnea desaturation time decreases flexible fiber optic bronchoscope and cricothyroidotomic kit but if it's not there then a cannula scalpel and a smaller ettt Uh, if a airway exchange catheter is available and thrive, uh, then it's good enough. Uh, this is a cart which has been uh, 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 according to the IDA guidelines, twenty sixteen. So preoperatively, I'll use preop bronchodilators if the patient's having wheeze. A CPAP if he's already using then that or a hospital CPAP, and encourage the patient for self positioning on operating table. I'll avoid sedatives but consider antacids. Uh, I'll plan an epidural anesthesia for uh, intraop and postop uh, analgesia. I'll attach the basic monitors and use extra long epidural needles and sonography if it's available. And do the epidural technique in a sitting position. Local anesthetic drug dose I'll use is according to the lean body weight. Now the advantages of regional are it is a opioid sparing uh, technique. It will help in early ambulation postoperatively as a prophylaxis for venous thromboembolism, and it will. Aid in better postoperative breathing, intraop and postop breathing. The problems are, of course, so there may be there may be a uh, failure in techniques because of the inadequate needle lens. But long needles are available, and as we all have discussed, uh, even uh, eight centimeter needles can be used. Now the position I'll do is ramping. We all know that in obese patients, ramping position is better than the sniffing position, as you can see in the first picture. So the external auditory meter should come at the level of the sternal notch. Pre-induction, I'll add, uh, attach the additional monitors of BIS and NMT. I'll pre-oxygenate in 25 degree head up ramp position, 100% oxygen uh, for three minutes, tidal volume breathing, or if uh, for one minute, then uh, it will be vital capacity eight breaths. Uh, and a target of end tidal oxygen of more than ninety. Throughout, I'll use a peep of ten centimeter. Now, the recent uh, uh, new concept is apneic oxygenation using a nasal cannula, according to IDA guidelines and other studies. So, it uh, further increases the apneic desaturation time to four minutes. Uh, in that, we have to give ten liters of uh, oxygen through nose uh, using a nasal cannula, or you can use any other uh, nasal uh, any other catheter. The advantage is. It delays the apneic desaturation. Pre-oxygenation may result in atelectasis. So later on, we have to use recruitment maneuvers. Uh, I'll quickly touch up Thrive. So Thrive is when you uh, use a equipment to give seventy liters per minute of uh, oxygen through nose throughout till you secure the airway. It is, needs a dedicated equipment, but we have HFNOs nowadays because of COVID, so we can use them. It provides CPAP, prolongs the safe apnea time. Now, uh, inducing, I'll induce with a rapid sequence induction. I'll use injection fentanyl, one microgram per kg of lean body weight. Injection propofol, two mg per kg of lean body weight. Injection scolin, one point five mg per kg of total body weight. And I'll quickly start the maintenance. I'll prefer DES. We have it in our uh, our setup. But uh, if not available, I'll uh, use CVO to avoid any uh, accidental awareness. Now, we if we calculate the drugs based on total body weight in these patients, the risk of overdose in Is there, and that is why initial anesthetic doses should be calculated according to lean body weight. But whenever you are in doubt, it is best to titrate and dose to effect. That is loss of eyelash reflexes, nerve stimulator response, or relief of pain. 
Now, in a obese patient, total body weight correlates with the actual weight. Lean body weight is nothing but uh, there are different formulae available. And this is a very commonly used uh, formula which has been uh, done, uh, done in a, uh, found out in a study published in BJ. Uh, BMI into height in meter square where BMI is taken as 26 in males and 22 in females. So this is the lean body weight of the patient. Now how well proceed? In a ramp position, also called as help position, uh, na with nasal insufflation in place and after pre-oxygenation and induction, I'll do a ba bag mask ventilation. If there is difficulty in ma uh, mask ventilation, I'll use the two-hand technique or a uh, adequate oral airway. If still it's not possible to ventilate, I'll quickly use the LMA Supreme, which is available with us as the second choice for, uh, for ventilation. And then I'll apply PEEP throughout. I'll, uh, my first attempt at laryngoscopy will be using McCoy four-size blade. And uh, in ramp position, short handle laryngoscopes are not required, but if uh, a normal handle is obstructing, then you can use a short handle one. Uh, if there is difficulty in tracheal intubation, I'll do external laryngeal manipulation using burp or insert the tube over a bougie or change blades or use a video laryngoscope. Uh, maximum attempts at laryngoscopy according to IDA guidelines should be uh, three and LMA insertion too, because if you uh, give too many attempts, then the edema will uh, make the even the ventilation difficult and you may land up in complete ventilation failure. If the LMA insertion is successful, uh, then I'll either proceed with surgery or attempt a fiber optic guided intubation through that LMA, or I'll awaken the patient to do a awake fiber optic bronchoscope. You may also go with, uh, ahead with a tracheostomy after consent. Now, other, if uh, LMA cannot be inserted, then uh, uh, you may you will have to proceed. I'll I'll proceed with the emergency cricothyrotomy. So uh, I'll confirm the ETT placement after a successful uh, intubation by visual confirmation of the tube, bilateral chest expansion, five point auscultation, and capnography. Now IDA guidelines they uh, emphasize the nasal insufflation of fifteen liter per minute oxygen during apnea in all patients. Calling for help should be done immediately after the first attempt fails. Uh, maximum three attempts at scopy and two attempts at LMA insertion. Blind tracheal intubation through the LMA is not recommended. Now, why awake fiber optic is not our first choice? Uh, there have been various studies done, like 180 patients of 50 kg, uh, 50 BMI, uh, only six had difficult intubation and all were successfully intubated by conventional laryngoscopy. So elective awake fiber optic bronchoscopy as first choice for intubation is not recommended, but ultimately the experience and ability of the laryngoscopist are the determinants. I'll maintain the anesthesia with 3% death with 50-50% of nitrous oxygen mixture and maintain the base at 40-50 surgical level. Towards the end, I may decrease the death and increase the base level. Uh, then I'll maintain the neuromuscular uh, blockade by 0.05 per kg total body weight of injection atracurium to have zero twitch on the train of four. Uh, prophylaxis for nausea vomiting, I'll avoid DEXA uh, for the risk of hyperglycemia uh, and use ondensetron 4-MG IV around 15 to 40 minutes before the end of surgery. Uh, analgesia will be multimodal. If epidural is successful, I'll uh, use epidural local anesthetics, ketorolac, uh, first uh, um, NSAID and other NSAIDs and Dexmed are equally helpful. Now, ventilator, I'll use a pressure control mode. It is more helpful than a volume control mode to maintain a ETCO2 of 30 to 40 mmHg. And recruitment manual is very important to uh, reverse atelectasis. Uh, peak inspiratory pressure at of 55 for 10 seconds, followed by a peak of 10 centimeter in between. So it has been seen that uh, when you compare DES and SIVO, the early postoperative recovery is better as compared to SIVOFLURIN. Each SIVOFLURIN MAC cover delays the ability to swallow by 4.5 minutes, but it's not delayed by DESFLURIN. So if it's available, I'll prefer DES. If it's not available, I'll prefer SIVO. Also with propofol, the significant decrease in the lung function as the surgical time increases. Emergence, I'll stop the test at the last stitch, then neostigmine glycopyrrolate according to total body weight when the top ratio is 0.7. I'll ensure that the patient is fully awake. This is very important and there's no residual palsy. The patient's having eye opening at verbal command, sustained head lift for five seconds. All the airway reflexes like swallowing uh, have returned and patient is breathing good tidal volume. 
ट्वेंटी फाइव हेड ऑफ पोजिशन इज मैंडेटरी एंड इफ देर वॉज एनी डिफिकल्टी इन इंट्यूबेशन देन आई विल प्रिफर टू रिमूव द ट्यूब ओवर एन एयर एयर वे एक्सचेंज कैथेटर इफ अवेलेबल और वेंटिलेटिंग डू जी सो वॉट आर द पर्ल्स द पर्ल्स आर वेंटिलेट इंट्यूबेट एक्सट्यूबेट एंड रिकवर रैमटअप यूज ड्रग्स विच हैव फास्टर ऑनसेट ऑफ सेट और दोज विच कैन बी रिवर्स इजीली मिनिमल इंडक्शन टू वेंटिलेशन टाइम टू प्रिवेंट डिसेचुरेशन Tracheal intubation is recommended because electively, if you intubate, then it's always better than an emergency intubation uh, uh, situation arising. Then uh, caution with LMA is important in morbidly obese patient. You will use recruitment and uh, PEEP should be used. Uh, opioid short acting should be used, or a opioid sparing multimodal analgesia is helpful. And you should ensure a full reversal. post operatively i'll position the patient in lateral or semi sitting position with supplemental oxygen i'll monitor the spo2 till the patient is either ambulatory or the spo2 is more than 19 sleep and i'll use cpap uh, in post op uh, uh, post operatively multimodal opioid sparing analgesia using epidural top ups ketorolac other nsaids and compression bandages and early ambulation and low molecular weight heparin for dvt prophylaxis Uh, throughout, I'll ensure the glucose to be less than one ten mg per deciliter. So we all we've seen that BMI alone does not make the patient high risk. I'll find out whether the patient is having different uh, health conditions associated. I'll assess the airway and then I'll confirm whether the patient is high risk and then plan a safe and individualized care determined by the comorbidities and extent of the surgery. These are the references which I have used. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anushree. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Can we have a discussion, please, Chairman, madam? Good presentation, Dr. Anushree. Thank you so much, madam. Uh, what will be your uh, plan for analgesia in the post-operative period? Uh, I can use a uh, uh, local anesthetic to epidural uh, analgesic dose or. Uh, I can also use Ketorolac 30 mg IV uh, TDS uh, for 24 hours. Can you and, use a tab block? Uh, yes, ma'am. If tab block is available, it will. Uh, it is help. a laparotomy. Yes, it will. Local infiltration and tab block will also help uh, in analgesia. It is not going to be easy to give tab block in this patient. Yes, if so. I request my surgeon. I request my surgeon to give it from inside. If it is possible, ma'am, if epidural is there till the catheter is removed, then we can use epidural uh, analgesia. Uh, or if sonography is available, uh, uh, then tab block can be given uh, if we want. If the patient is complaining of pain, but my first approach will be epidural analgesia along with ketorolac and uh, uh, other NSAIDs. Diclofenac can be used. Also, dexmedetomidine can be and used. And when will you extubate this patient? patient? Yes, ma'am. When will you extubate this patient? Will you shift the patient to the ICU with intubation, and or uh, you will extubate and then? The same? patient uh, saturation preoperatively, and how the patient recovers on table. If the patient is fully awake, is not tolerating the tube, and he is taking good tidal volume breathing, and upper airway reflexes are there, then I will prefer to extubate on table. and i will use a non invasive ventilation if it is required post operatively uh, either a niv or a cpap uh, along with analgesia so that he can tolerate that non invasive ventilation also uh, and i'll in, uh, keep the patient in a ramp up uh, head up position so that it helps in increasing the frc uh, and uh, i'll try to maintain the saturation till the pre op levels if it's 90 or 92 And in this scenario, your case was an emergency one. Suppose yes. it was a planned case. In the preoperative optimization, what would be your steps? Preoperative optimization, if it's not an emergency surgery, even weight loss is suggested uh, because it uh, uh, and a uh, um, 
a diet which decreases the liver size is also uh, said to be uh, helpful uh, yeah. so i can plan that uh, uh, so that the even hypertension uh, bp uh, is lowered and even glycemic control is achieved because of that i'll advise the patient if he is having uh, uh, to undergo polysomnography and calculate the apnea hypopnea index so that i perfectly know whether the patient falls in the category of moderate to severe osa then i'll measure the abg also um, entire night uh, um, spo2 measurement can be done oximetry can be done to know if the patient has osa and then i'll advise him cpap uh, at his own uh, place also so that he becomes used to the cpap then we can uh, if the patient tolerates cpap it will be very useful for him to have a better recovery and with that cpap itself the patient's respiratory uh, system improves a lot then also will improve with cpap and bipap and uh, uh, the strain and on the heart give incentive pyrometry before and after Incentive uh, yes. pyrometry exercises. Yes, hmm? yes. breathing exercise. Doctor Anushree, if I may comment. Yes, sir. Let me first compliment you for the immaculate slides that you had. Thank you very much, no, sir. Oh, wonderful! I see people writing fifteen and twenty lines in one slide, and then they only get confused. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Another thing is, I do not like mask ventilation. preoperatively because it is not not easy most of my yes, team sir. members especially ladies they have little little fingers and these guys are so huge face they can hardly hold this so i invariably insert that lms supreme which you mentioned yes sir or or a bearded guy it is so difficult to ventilate yes. you know with most of the mask yes. that we have another thing is if i at my age of 68 claim that 16 varsha par pasun i have not used macintosh laryngoscope except on a day when my king vision has stopped working I don't know why we are still talking about that. I agree with you, sir. It is a special machine invented where the light goes off the moment you go inside the mouth. <laughs> I think it is already tomorrow in Singapore and in Australia. Let us also come in tomorrow. All your surgeons are having all kind of scopes. Let us also have this kind of scopes. The cheapest I saw was one called as Postman video laryngoscope. King Vision ke baam mein do milte. is a disposable blade which is costing me 1.6 dollars that is what 110 rupees probably yes, i would sir. not even pick it up from my bucket to give for it you <laughs> another thing is uh, uh, post op post op also i insert lma at the end of reversal yes sir or just before reversal that uh, bailey's manual you can yeah bailey's bailey's i prefer yes. to do that because the requirement of anesthesia drops when the endotracheal tube is removed yes. so the last closer part becomes very easy and you can slowly land him into full consciousness one more yes. thing i can i do is last 20 25 minutes i switch off all my sevo fluoren des fluoren whatever it is i switch mm -hmm. on to propofol believe me propofol is much cheaper than sevo fluoren yes, and sir. all that agitation etc everything is gone there wide as possible awake I do not know how many of you use that uh, CPAP mask. Just the yeah. CPAP mask with an oxygen tube. It costs barely three hundred rupees or something, you know. But it is so good at the end of reversal and extubation. Simply put that CPAP mask, which is connected to the oxygen cylinder, and the patient gets fully ventilated, nicely and inflated. So these are just a little few differences that we I do in uh, my private practice. Yogin sir, one more thing you can do is you can pass bilateral nasal airways, yes, right. which go only up to the uvula, and they will maintain the patency of the respiratory tract. so that also can be done uh, uh dr choudhary uh, uh fantastic presentation uh, thank you very much for it uh you said about abg yes sir so why would you do an abg what are you searching for uh sir to see if along with hypoxia there is hypercapnia then patient may have a type 2 respiratory failure uh, okay. yeah but what what especially where will you use that information one thing is definitely you said if there is hypoxia and hypercarbia dr kelkor also suggested he told you that you should put cpap how long you will you uh, use cpap on this uh, elective surgery you will go almost for a month you will repeat the C, uh, abg and you will find there is dramatic improvement but 
but again the patient is still say hypoxic he has become less acidotic from 7.2 ph he has become 7.3 38 or close to 7.4 but still there is hypoxia and there is hypercarbia now beyond 4 weeks your cpap trial doesn't work now what you are going to i can use a bipap uh, on this patient if cpap is failing then you can use the bipap with uh, 8 to 4 or 12 to 5 uh, bipap or even a higher one a bipap is said to have uh, better results in those uh, uh, in which cpap fails so i may go a step further and uh, give bipap to the patient and see if it's it's improving along with incentives can sir, i shinde sir you are uh, muted sir you have to unmute yourself yes yeah okay suddenly i got muted yeah so, no what i was saying was once you know your abg now what you do is when you are extubating the patient set up a limit of hypoxia with hypercarbia what you are going to tolerate of my personal is thing and that also various articles have suggested a pco2 of 60 and a po2 of 50 is still you can extubate this patient on table beyond that put the patient into the icu let the patient come out of fit zone over a period of 6 to 8 hours sometimes even overnight ventilation and then extubate the patient next day morning it's much safer mm. alternative rather than to go in a hurried intubation so the pre op abg is very essential to have two things putting the patient on cpap the recovery mode and whether you will extubate on table or no that also it what about your fluids how are you going to give fluids yes sir Uh, uh, sir, I may use uh, if the echo suggests that the patient is having LV dysfunction, or if there is pulmonary hypertension with call pulmonary nail or right ventricular dysfunction or dilated RVRA, then I may I'll insert a central line in that patient and give give CVP uh, guided fluids. Uh, I'll maintain a CVP of around eight to ten uh, on ventilator. Yeah, and uh, uh, you said uh, you will give uh, the. what techniques uh, where you uh, dilate the alveoli the the, the recruitment the recruitment sorry i was not getting the word for the benefit of listeners would you be able to tell them how you will do it actually inside the ot uh, yes sir i'll give a peak inspiratory pressure of 50 i'll set it to a higher level and then i will uh, keep it for a period of uh, uh, 30 seconds and the, uh, after that i'll keep a peep of 10 cm so that there is uh, the closure airway closure is not there otherwise it will immediately be followed by airway closure if yeah. we don't keep the peep of 10 yeah you can do it on ventilator and you can do it by hand we can do it by hand on bane yeah. so if you are doing it on hand a pressure of 40 40 also is good enough and then hold the bag in your hand in pressed position with cpap valve closed and then i'll release it and keep the cpap closed valve closed for some time immediately put the patient back onto the peep on. as you do it and 10 cm of peep as you rightly said will help you uh, achieve the thing or you can do it on ventilator whereby you reduce the ventilatory rate from whatever you have kept to 4 so it becomes a 15 second cycle you have kept i ratio 1 is to 2 so inspiratory time becomes 7 to 8 seconds so automatically what you are doing is 8 7 7 to 8 seconds of back compression oh. that ventilator does it so that also you can do if you have a good ventilator and a good machine yes yes sir you again you can use on mute unmute sir at a respiratory rate of 4 per minute it is going to be more of pranayams than uh, ventilation in reality it's just only for recruitment <laughs> okay uh, one more thing none of the speakers spoke about today we have discussed about bariatric patients but we have not discussed about patient who has been post bariatric surgery half of this cesarean patients are going to come because they have undergone bariatric surgery just before wedding and they are now going to come for surgery and remember only one thing that the surgeon has removed all the valves in between 
they have bypassed the valves. Your pylorus is no more existing there. The only valve which is there is the one which is last at the bottom of the body. And the patient will vomit from that part which he had eaten six days back. If you are in a bad day on that day, you are in for deep trouble. That's why they always keep these patients fasting for five or six days and all only on liquid diet. But yet you have to keep in mind that if they vomit, they are going to bring out things which they ate five days back. Unmute, sir. Please unmute. No, no, I, I, yeah, I am finished with my statement. Okay. Uh, sir, yeah. I would like to ask you one question. Okay, sir. You mentioned that you practice belly's manure in all your patients. So, even if that patient has difficult airway, so do you still go ahead with belly's manure? On the contrary, it might be easier to ventilate than LMA. No, that sir. Is that is okay. Like, yeah, I understand. Yes. That, uh, and the patient is not. I'm not sure uh, understand. Yeah. Huh? When you re when yeah. you realized, see, to start with, I put my LMA to ventilate, so I know that I could easily ventilate with my LMA. Number one. So towards the end of the surgery, I just I simply insert my LMA inside, inflate the LMA, then deflate the cup of the endotracheal tube, and then remove the endotracheal tube and simply switch on that cops connected to the this part. Patient is still relaxed enough and patient now has got lesser resistance and the patient is able to be ventilated very nicely and it is, it is quite comfortable. In fact, uh, especially those surgeries where the surgeon doesn't like patient coughing around or a hernia patient and all, no, lap hernias and all. It really helps. It really matters a lot. Yes, actually, even I agree with Dr. Yogen that uh, one must replace the LMA at the end of the surgery before exhibiting the patient. It gives you easily 20 minutes of the time of reversal. It, the slowly mm -hmm. last 20 minutes are taken care of by LMA. You can even allow him to go on spontaneous and little assisted breathing. Yes, that's right. And by that time, the patient is so wide awake. I have removed my desflurane and all those things also before. He's only under propofol and they only, of course, I love to use Conox monitor for all my patients because you just don't know what is going to go on. Sir, I routinely practice uh, Bailey's manure to all my neurosurgical patients because I want them wide awake at the end and also do not have, want to have any more dynamic perturbations, especially at the time of excavation. So I, just, I was not sure whether in obese patients also or patients who have difficult time. That is a very good today from all the moderators, like even for the, if you experience some difficult airway, but still you can go ahead with Bailey's manure in all the patients. Madam, you have to say something on this. Yes, I already said that I agree with Dr. Bhatt as far as uh, changing the, uh, inserting the LME at the end, at the time of extubation. Actually, I wanted uh, Dr. Anusri to answer in that manner when I asked her about extubation. That's true. Because the LME is much better tolerated by the patient. So the patient tolerates it without coughing. And later yes. on, when the patient wide away, the patient can remove the LME. Here, madam, in case you are so much worried about the difficult intubation, you can put in an oxygen, uh, your exchange exchange catheters, exchange catheter with an oxygen tubing. So now your endotracheal tube is in, you put in the catheter, take out your tube, and now put your LMA onto that. So now you have a dual mechanism. You have a tube exchanger inside and an LMA inside. If God forbid you feel that you can't ventilate on the LMA, you then take out the LMA and put in an endotracheal. That is another safety mechanism you can have it. Yes. And instead of that, we can uh, put a ventilating boogie inside. Yeah, yeah, that same, same, same one, same one. Yeah, yeah. There are tube exchangers. Then there are uh, what you are saying, oxygen. I think what uh, Manisha is aiming at is the risk of. Aspiration, do you, uh, are yeah, you worried uh, in obese patients as compared to the neurosurgical cases? That was your yeah, thought, right? And particularly Anushri's case, it was an emergency exploratory laparotomy. So for that case, uh, the baby's manure may not be that easy yeah. for uh, as far as aspiration is concerned. Uh, Ma'am, I have also one question regarding this technique. Uh, pardon me, but uh, if uh, LMA is put, then uh, is there a difference between the return of oral reflexes? Because I've read that uh, maybe if you put a LMA, 
that now uh, as compared to ett the return of reflexes is slowed so should uh, we be bothered about that no I, like I, following when you have read i don't main know. reason why we should shift to lma at the end is sometimes the patient does not tolerate the endotracheal tube patient coughs on the tube and when you extubate the patient patient is not able to maintain the airway because of the falling back of the tongue because the patient does not tolerate endotracheal tube to that lighter a plane as the patient tolerates the lma so actually to have a smooth transition towards avicenna this lma technique is uh, recommended thank and you and that is what dr yogan but rightly uh explained and i don't uh, i haven't come across any such article if you have come across that the return of protective reflexes come later that means the patient airway is compromised that is what you want to say right yes but then this lma can be kept till the patient is fully awake mm -hmm. so the chances of aspiration are not there What does Doctor Bhatt has to say on Hello. this? Hello, how uh, routinely, Madam? Oh, how routinely uh, the people uh, putting the rice to to prevent the aspiration in obese patient, but not posted for laparotomy? See, if you put in a rice to to get the patient, the stomach, the surgeon many times needs the rice to definitely. But if you have put in a rice tube before you put in the LMA, you can withdraw the rice tube above the lower esophageal sphincter, so that the sphincter is not rendered incompetent. If the sphincter is rendered incompetent by the presence of the RC, then the chances of aspiration are there. Silent aspiration can occur. But then you are supposed to withdraw the rice tube in esophagus above the lower esophageal sphincter. Okay. Thank you, madam. There is no question in the chat box. There is one question uh, on the YouTube. Yeah, yeah. There is a one yeah. question on the YouTube channel for the first phase because uh, many of the people, many of our members had joined YouTube because uh, the 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 form was full right from the beginning. So the question, very interesting question. Uh, in case of dural puncture with epidural needle. At what mark should we fix the catheter for continuous spinal technique? Anyone can take this answer. If there is a dural puncture with epidural needle, at what mark should we fix our epidural catheter for continuous spinal technique? One to two centimeter inside the spinal space is more than enough for us to maintain a continuous spinal. So depending upon what length you have got it, add two centimeters. So your space is your catheter is two centimeters inside. But mind you, whosoever is done uh, continuous spinal, you got to be very very aseptic. So every time you give a K uh, drug, you have to wash up as if you are washing up for a spinal. Complete wash up like a surgeon because you are going to give the drug. If it is contaminated, you are sure shot going to get meningitis. And then, if you are going to keep the catheter, knot it, label it, tell everybody that it is a continuous spinal. I have knotted it so that no accidental in injection of any drug should happen. Keep it there for twenty-four hours. The hole reduces because the fibrosis occurs around the catheter. So the chances of PDPH with an eighteen G or a sixteen G epidural needle. Disappear, they become very very less. So there is a clear cut management given. So don't hide that you've had a puncture. Don't hide it is a it is a spinal catheter. Mention everything on paper. Not it two three times so that even if God forbid anybody wishes to give something, mm -hmm. it cannot go like that. And then continue keeping it for twenty four hours and then remove it. You only remove it because you've done the complication. And after 24 hours, you will see chance of PDPH go extremely down with these people. And then, if it still then happens, then you have to give the the gold standard that is 20 ml of your epidural blood patch again under aseptic in, uh, conditions. That's the management. Very well answered. Very well answered, Raman. Uh, any questions in the chat box, Avinash? 
no, there is no question. It's uh, 9, 10 p.m., madam. Uh, it was nice discussion. It will continue uh, if, if we continue like this. 11 so, February. Yeah, we, we will continue next uh, session. So, next next session again. Next session is a master class, and again we have Dr. Yeah. Hemant Sutter, one of the the master in obesity and anesthesia. No, uh, even Aparna is there. She is the queen of obesity. Uh, if I am the king, she is the queen. So we will listen to those two masters, yeah. king and queen of obesity and anesthesia, Dr. Aparna Sinha from. The again, you are Hemant. looking at Don today. I always look like Amrish Puri. <laughs> no. And Prem Chopra. <laughs> Okay, we will uh, um, finish. I will, yes. Yeah. I will put out of thanks now. It was a phenomenal and a memorable day today. I thank to all our national office bearer, Dr. Dr. Venkat Kiri, sir, Dr. Navin Manotra, sir, Dr. Anjali Sudha, madam, for joining uh, this meeting and with us for the release of today's missions. Today's meeting was a mixture of academic and non-academic and, and a celebration also. I congratulate Dr. Heman Sinde, our Nisa News editor, editor, for his first newsletter and for his dedicated hard work done. In spite of getting uh, illness, I don't mention, <laughs> uh, he worked hard to release uh, this uh, newsletter today. Dedicated hard work only made this today. This is possible, and I have seen he was cooking also many times, and uh, but uh, keeping his uh, face smiling. <laughs> so that's uh, so. Hats up to the today's celebrity, Dr. Heman Sinde. I thank to today's faculty, Dr. Runal Harde, no, Madam Dr. Anushri Choudhury for their excellent presentation. I also thank uh, I, I, I also thank to uh, Dr. Yogen Bhatt, a leader in group practitioner. Uh, I will not thank Dr. Kerkar, madam, but I will do namaskar from here to ma'am, the only teacher, I will uh, my, only my beloved teacher. So Thanks to our president, Dr. Katikar Madam, Dr. Anita Madam, Dr. Sade Sir, Dr. Samir Soni for conducting this uh, session. And today's uh, second celebrity, Dr. Maya, uh, who presented and conducted the release of MISA News. Uh, so flawlessly and uh, uh, excellent way. Thanks to all Maharashtrian, Ma Maharashtra Asian who attended to today's webinar and this session and witnessed today's newsletter, newsletter, MISA newsletter release. Thanks to Abhijit for uninterrupted uh, technical support. We will meet, meet soon in next month or in next week also. Thank you. Long live MSC ISA. Long live ISA. Thank you. Thank you very much. I declare this meeting is over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Misa. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, Misa News WhatsApp for Kadi and he mentioned this, sir. Take a minute. We will stop the recording. Then uh, we will discuss. One minute. One minute only. Yeah, yeah, yeah.